Datology Coach Podcast. Hi, Sarah. Hey, girl. Hey. Uh, hey, girl. Hey. All right. I, I could pretend to be all chipper right now. Um, I am not going to be. Okay. So, a uh, little, because you know how much we love the follow up, right? We, we do. Love follow we up do here. So, follow-up. I'm going to provide some follow up. Okay. That son of a bitch still hasn't responded to my text. Oh. And I think I know. And, and no, I don't think I know why. Well, okay. I know why. So remember how in the text I said something about, you know, I don't want to sort of resume our friendship only right. for you to, you know, start dating somebody and then I'm going to have to cut it off, you know, out of respect. Mm-hmm. So the lack of response says two things to me. One, he is in fact dating somebody. Okay. okay. And two that it's somebody that i was always like what the fuck is going on there like oh, you think yeah do you remember me telling you about the woman in this building i sure do okay uh, may i posit Kristen, that it actually reveals three things and that the third thing is that he's a bitch yeah <laughs> he's a cowardly little bitch yeah and and yes and here's the thing now if he was just dating somebody i could and you know, oh, I don't want to hurt her feelings. Okay, but here, here's the thing: not how a person this isn't is. how you treat somebody. Mm-mm. Um, he knows that if he responds and say, you know, yes, I am dating somebody, he knows. As anybody who spends five fucking minutes with me knows, that I'm gonna know exactly who it is, and I'm gonna say something. Mm-hmm. He know he knows it. He knows that I will say, it's that woman in your building, isn't it? Mm. And then not only is he going to have to, because he's not going to lie. Because again, he knows me. Not Not only is he going to say, yes, that will prove, and and, and that'll prove, oh, I was right. I was right. This is literally, I mean, this is literally the woman he told you not to worry about. (laughs) Right. Uh Right. And she's somebody that he met through his ex-wife. Okay. Uh, and he helped her get an apartment. And it just so yeah. happened that that apartment was in his building. Right. And this was someone who, it was, this was like early, early days of us dating. I remember. And he brought her up. We were out to dinner. And he was like, oh, I helped, you know, my wife's friend um, or something like I went to lunch with my wife's friend, my ex-wife's, no wife, Jesus, my ex-wife's friend. And, yeah. Record and that's scratch? Where, re- fucking record scratch. <laughs> uh-huh. And I went, why are you telling me this? What now? <laughs> What now? Like, again, making it very clear, I don't like this. Like, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, he always insisted, and I believed him, right? Because, like, her living in this building, I'm like, oh, that seems a little, that's just kind of not him, Mr. Voidance. I don't know. Because his, you know, because of his daughter, right? Right. Like, that would be weird. Yeah. Um. And also because he met her be- through his ex-wife. And I'm right. like, that's fucking weird. Uh, I would say so. That's fucking weird on both parts. Both it's like them. he has selective boundaries. He has selective boundaries. Uh, Have we ever, oh, did we just make, like coin a new thing? We, I think we did. I think we just invented a thing. Well, he invented a new <laughs> thing. But I'm going to take credit for it because fuck him. Because F- fuck this guy. Uh, and... And and I'll just say this. If she was friends with his ex-wife and now she's dating him, hmm. boo. Now, listen, the whole, like, fuck girl code. It's not girl code. It's just, like, that's just common decency. It's just messy. It's messy, but it's also common decency. Like, don't get involved with, like, your friend's ex type right. of thing. Don't do it to your ex. Don't, just don't do it. Right. It's just shitty. Yep. And it's shitty on both of their parts. If and this is this is this is an if because remember this is me and just. But Sarah, wh- wh- what am I going to say? <laughs> what am I going to say, Sarah? How often am I wrong about this stuff? Yeah, very rarely. <laughs> so, I think because that's to me, I'm like, why wouldn't he respond? What are the reasons? Because it's just it isn't. It's not like him. Um, and that that's the, really is the only thing that makes that sense. really is the only thing that makes sense. Because yeah. he doesn't want you to be right. <laughs> or he doesn't want to tell you you were right. Right. Mm-hmm. 
He doesn't want to tell me I'm right. He doesn't want to. I don't know. Because it's disappointing not disappointing man. He, he really. Wow. Did he turn out to be a disappointment? Really disappointing. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I'm trying not to be. I'm trying not to be hurt about this. Right. Yeah. I'm having my moments. Sure. Where I catch myself starting to cry and I'm like, I am not. I refuse. No, I'm not doing this. Stop. I'm not doing this over a fucking. I'm not doing this. Right. Over a man. No. They're absolutely not worth it. They're really not. And at the same time, I'm like, you know what? I hope he's happy. Go ahead. Go be happy. I don't care. But the lack of response after. Dear God. The <laughs> lack of response after I made myself vulnerable. That mm-hmm. fucking bothers me. Yes. Of course it does. Right? That that really bothers of me. It does. Uh so uh I gave you, sir, I gave you the benefit plenty of the doubt. Of time. I gave you the benefit of the doubt. I gave you plenty of time. Time is up. You are officially it's officially fuck that guy time. Yeah. Yeah? I think so. So fuck that guy. Fuck you. Oh. Fuck fuck you for making me cry. And uh, that's really all I ha- all I have to say about that. I'm sorry that turned out that way. I mean, thank you. Uh, I I'm hurt and I'm a little bit sad. I'm disappointed. Yeah, I'm disappointed too. I just thought he was better than that. Right. One of those times when one of those rare times when I'm wrong. I know, but it's just like it's just it just is so profoundly disappointing because <laughs> this man is a fully grown adult. Mm-hmm. He's got adult responsibilities that he's juggling and like still is doing that fucking 15 year old bullshit mm-hmm. where he's like, oh, I don't want to be the bad guy. So I'll do nothing. Right. Which I know we're not on the posted episode yet. I was like, just going to say, but that's what makes you the bad guy. That's what makes you the bad guy. It my is. Guy. It really is. <laughs> oh, you fucking asshole. And, oh. like, why doesn't he get that? It's so frustrating. I don't know. Maybe. He, I, I don't know. I think he just. I think he does. He just. He knows I was right. He knows. He's like. Now I'm going to have to tell her that. that you thing. know, it's just. It's the lack of courage for me. Yeah. And I want to be clear that, like, it, it was never. I never got the sense that they were having an affair or anything like that. I, no. I never thought that. But I just, I was, I was bothered because he would say, every, cause he didn't, he knew not to talk about her in front of me. And I wasn't going to tell him, I don't want you to be friends with her. Right. Right. Because I had no reason, right. He, it's someone from Ireland. It, it was, it, that means a lot to him. I want him, I wanted him to have that. Mm-hmm. But it was like little things where he'd say, oh yeah, so-and-so, she went to Costco and she picked me up. Da-da-da. What? Right. She went, What? Little things like that that I would go, that's off like that's awfully familiar. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I can, you know, I can be friends with her. It was just I mean, yeah, it's just so it's so predictable. It's it really is. It's the lack of courage for me. Mm-hmm. It's the cliche for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a disappointment. Cause like it's such a tell immediately mm-hmm. when a man that you're seeing starts casually mentioning another woman yep because they don't that they, they don't they don't they don't talk about other women right unless right unless this right right now i don't mean to say like they never tell an anecdote involving a woman but mm-hmm. like you just you just fucking know it when you hear it mm-hmm. you know it when you hear it yep. and the first one is always coupled with too much protest yeah about oh no no it's not that at all mm-hmm. 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 yeah sure, we sure don't even sir. bother yeah don't <laughs> we can yep yep so yeah we're at fuck that guy time um for dawn unfortunately and uh, uh so what does have... that mean for you are you gonna block his number no i'm okay. not doing anything i'm not exerting one more bit of energy okay i'm just mm-hmm. not I, you don't I, think I there's just, any danger of well and i'll tell you why the real reason is i want to know i want to know if i'm right okay i want to know if i'm right yeah right yeah so, and he doesn't have social media or anything right no so, no yeah. boo 
Well, how know. do you expect to find out when this is over? He's he's going to be sad and he'll call you and be like, oh, yeah. No, I don't I don't <laughs> think it will be over. That's just right. I, I think this is probably who he's going to. I think he's going to be with her. Forever? Uh, yeah, I think so. Huh. So, sir, we hardly knew ye. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Fairly well. Uh, au revoir. I don't. They... I don't wish you well. I don't wish you well. <laughs> I mean, Kristen might. I'm not. I'm not. Tell, I'm not telling Kristen not to take the high road. Right. But yeah. listen, sir. Yep. When you go low, I'll meet you in hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good friend, sir. That's a good friend, people. Just remember that. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, just in the so uh, summer, summertime, the uh, the um, everything's going to be changing just because summertime for my dogs is very very busy. I so, like that hell reminded you of summer. <laughs> Right, hell, summer heat. Yeah. Uh, so our recording night has changed, which means that the early release episode will go up Fridays. Yeah. And then the regular episode will go up Mondays, and then the bonus episodes should go should typically go up on like Tuesday or Wednesday. So, if you were like, "Hey, what happened yesterday?" This is what happened. We're we're the this is Friday will be early release. Mondays will be for regular release, and so people know. Because this is a free episode. Mm-hmm. Um, we've changed things because, as I've said before, the, you know, we did a lot of work. I want to make money from it. Yeah. And so it's now two episodes a month are free. Two episodes are for the are for the Patreon subscribers, mm-hmm. plus the bonus episodes are for the um, Patreon subscribers, plus the posts, things like that, all for the Patreon. It's very subscribers. good giving in game of you. It, it, I have to say, it, it, it is. Yeah, it is. It's a lot so of content, now, regardless. Right. So now you guys who are paying are already, you're going to get those two episodes as part of your tiers. Mm-hmm. Um, and, the, and, and like one or two bonus episodes. Yeah. Uh, and the Sex and the City series. I mean, what more could you want, really? I think you do. I think it's, <laughs> it's pretty great. I think it's a pretty great deal yeah. for five, seven dollars. I think that's pretty great. Agreed. So go to patreon.com slash datology coach, subscribe. Come listen to the fun. Come talk about what a shit stained dawn is, because I will have a post <laughs> going up about this where everybody can tell me how they feel. Um, and <laughs> with that said, we are going to, as they say, move along. Yeah. Sarah. Keep it moving. Um, we got a very meaty letter. Hmm? Meaty, Sarah. Hmm? Uh, and would you like to read it? Um, yeah. Can you give me a little pause? I sure can. Oh, no, wait. Never mind. Here it is. Got it right right away. Got it right away. All right. Okay. So, letter is uh, less of a question, more of a comment. Um, So, it says, just a comment to the Alpha Dom episode, but probably also relevant elsewhere. Yes, unfortunately, it probably (laughs) is. (laughs) Uh, Letter writer says, I think that there is an issue when talking about women that we intuitively feel but can't put our finger on. There's a lot of information out there that insinuates that women have a shared herd brain that can be gamed and manipulated with a list of simple rules. There's strong patriarchal consensus that a woman's shared herd brain shares the same value system, hopes, dreams, desires, and attraction, for example, to alpha or dominant men. And it fails to acknowledge that women, trans thems, etc. are multifaceted, complex, individual beings with wants and desires that are actually very unique, almost like human beings, (laughs) almost (laughs) like men. Mm -hmm. Patriarchy also very much exploits cognitive biases and brain's needs for simple answers, especially if these simple answers stereotype and dehumanize half the planet's population. So regarding eights and nines, I think it's a dehumanizing scale of compliance with the latest Western white misogynistic rules, most compliant, or sorry, more compliant, higher on the scale, more stereotyped one is. So he, meaning Alpha Dom, probably accidentally fell into favor with some women, not because of his misogynistic games, but because he is non-threatening. Mm-hmm. That's yes. always a good thing if you consider current oppression and survival instincts of all people. I'm sure he doesn't talk about this approach to these women because that would unmask him to be who he really is, which is a broken individual with minimal compassion and humanity towards half the planet's human beings. But I would call it the curse of the non-threatening man. (laughs) Okay, let's let's break that down. Now, you said you were like, 
that is such a burn. It's such a, well, to him it would be, and that's right. why I love it. <laughs> right. Now explain why it would be such a burn. Oh, he'd be so hurt to be called non-threatening. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, generally when women say a man is non-threatening, we mean they are uh, not, well, they're, well, they're not scary, right? Mm-hmm. We're not uh, afraid that they will erupt into violence. Mm-hmm. We're not afraid of any repercussions right. in interacting with them. Uh, yeah, it means they're not, they're not controlling us, basically. Basically, that's that's all it means, right? Right. It means that he has absolutely no real influence or power, right, um, over women, right. Which is the one thing he thinks he has. It's the right? one thing. <laughs> it's the one thing that guys like him think that they have yeah. is, oh, I'm manipulating her, and say, like, no, you're just so homely that we don't see you as threatening. You know, I you're mean, so I mean, awkward. It, it's a number of things, right? Like mm-hmm. it's it's homeliness, it's physique. Mm-hmm. Right. Typically, non-threatening men are not uh, hulking goliaths. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Typically, right. I'm not saying you know I don't want to body shame anyone. I'm not saying uh, Jason Momoa isn't lovely to be around. Yeah, um, I'm sure he is actually. But uh, yeah, typically non-threatening is an insult to men, especially men like this, because they want right. to be. Uh, you know they they want to be men but through the male gaze right you know speaking of men the the non-threatening man you know this is why i think everyone loves except me everyone loves paul rudd oh you wait you don't love paul rudd i thought you did no no i have heard not great things about him what yeah you gotta dig you gotta go to fomwa on reddit i've only heard great things about him digging do some digging okay um well you gotta tell us what they are that he cheats oh okay right. which is unfortunate uh but that is part, you know and that is why he's non-threatening but let's talk about one really truly non-threatening in the best way like non-threatening man that wasn't non-threatening because he wasn't going to like he wasn't going to uh, uh, assault us and i was watching a video today of patrick swayze when okay. he was in Skate Town, USA. This is a video going on Instagram. I'll try to find it again so that Skate I can Town, post USA. it. Is that this a is movie? A mo- it's a movie from the 80s. Okay. Now, remember, he's a former ballet dancer, right? Oh, I don't I From know Texas. That. Okay. So it, this guy is just, he's very, he, he's just very confident with his body. He, sure. He has great balance. He's got, he's just, he's just so. Strong co- as hell. Strong as hell and coordinated. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, and he had, but he had these sort of traditionally feminine qualities, right? Like he had Mm. the feathery blonde hair with the highlights and he was a ballet dancer and, you know. Did people in the 80s consider him effeminate? I Yes. I don't think I knew I think in the the early stages of his career, Uh. I, I think they did. But there were, especially after Dirty Dancing, like men who dance were just not considered masculine, hmm. which was so stupid. But, but Kevin Bacon a, and Footloose, too. Right. But Kevin Bacon was not a good dancer in Footloose. Oh, OK. I right. just I guess I just thought it was acceptable for men to dance in the 80s. <laughs> no. I you're, mean, so you're telling me no? OK. No. He listen, Patrick Swayze, what made him non-threatening was that this was somebody who embraced these traditionally feminine qualities Mm. and he just he never once seemed like ashamed of them which just said that he he saw nothing inherently wrong with being a woman right well that's i mean right because that's why so many men hate you know being called oh you know you're so sensitive oh they don't want to know they don't want to hear that Mm -hmm. because that's traditionally feminine and that it means that they're like my god they think that means i i'm gay Right. He, you know, growing up in Texas, a ballet dancer. This is, you know, hmm. this is a guy who became pretty common with who he was. Yeah. Right. Good and thing he was good looking. That helps too. He he was good looking. He was. Yeah. But again, even his looks, he even his looks. Is he dead? He, oh yeah, he dead. Oh, in 2009. okay. He had very delicate features. I he mean, looked. Maybe feminine. I'm picturing someone else, but I thought he had like a strong Roman nose. 
maybe, but he had really high cheekbones and full lips and, okay. the, you know, but he embraced all of it. Mm-hmm. You know, he just embraced all of it. And this is a guy who could go from Roadhouse to Dirty Dancing to Ghost to, um, oh, yeah. do you know what I mean? To mm-hmm. um, to Point Break to Tu Wong Fu. You know, a, mm-hmm. a movie in from the '90s about being transsexual, mm-hmm. right? And he and he did it so well, and that's why I think I think why he was so good in that movie was because he wasn't playing a woman. I I didn't feel like he was playing a woman. I just felt like he was being himself, hmm. right? I've it never was, seen it. Yeah. It just was such an authenticity to the to who the, else is in that? John Leguizamo, I think, and uh, Wesley Snipes. Okay. So how did Wesley do? That was more of a character. I feel like, okay. you know, Leguizamo was good, but Leguizamo grew up in the Bronx. You know, there's where, he, you know, he grew up. He's around. good in everything. I think he's good in everything <laughs> that he does. You yeah. know, And I just think he adds, uh, he's another one who I think is very authentic, uh, authentic, but, mm-hmm. but Swayze was so non-threatening despite the fact that he played these roles where he was beating people up. He was a fucking bank robber. He was a bouncer. Like he's playing these roles that were really kind of menacing, hmm. but yet was so non-threatening to women. And I do. I think it's because he just embraced the the more traditionally feminine aspects of his of of, of just his of just I don't know. Of his duality. Uh, yes, the du- it's the duality. Yeah. And again, you know how much I love duality. Sure. You know, and that that's like we we haven't seen anyone since. We haven't. Yeah, I mean, as you were as you were explaining Patrick Swayze to me, and thank you, um, mm-hmm. I was trying to think of like men currently around that women find non threatening. Mm-hmm. I came up with Pedro Pascal. Oh, I love him. Um, we all do, right? right. <laughs> you mentioned Paul Rudd. Um, I, I mean, I'm not dissuaded yet, but I'm, you know, I could change my mind, Paul. Something thin is ice. soft. There's something that's very soft and very sensitive about him. Hmm. That's why he's non-threatening. To um, women because... Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> There's a lot soft about him and his features, right? Yeah, he's, he is, he's non-threatening. He is, he is very pretty. Um, he's beautiful. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. who else? Oh, um, Seth Rogen. Yeah, he's yes. often often lumped into this category yeah, but, and, but and he was lumped in because like he used to be more more like plus sized the laugh no, I disagree that's not why because jonah hill is never mentioned in this same breath. okay all right <laughs> yes well i think seth rogan was just always the laughter too like he was just always laughing mostly because he was high but i was gonna say anybody who is that much of a stoner like probably is pretty gentle you would think well, right brad pitt Brad oh, does he? Oh. Brad Pitt's a major stoner. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. I mean, I knew he wasn't gentle. Yeah. No shit. But... Um. You know. Oh, you know who else is? I think starting to get lumped in here with the, to get more current. Austin Butler. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. because again, here we go again with the with the more feminine features and the. Well, oh, he... I've got one. I got one. Oh, Evan oh, Peters. Oh. oh yes. Even though Evan Peters and Emma, and Emma Roberts. They oh no! Exactly, it. Evan Peters got his ass kicked. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say he got his ass kicked. So I don't, he is I don't not think... threatening, right? Um, I definitely think she went after him, and he That's was defending himself. Yeah, but he Evan just Peters took it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he certainly did just take it. Yeah, uh, because she was arrested. You know how know. How, how hard it is. <laughs> Those situations, something had to be funky. Yeah. So um, what a lunatic, by the way. She's terrible. I don't imagine? like her. I've never liked her. I've heard horrible stories about her on set of American Horror yeah, Story. She just I seems too. terrible. Uh, so fuck her. Uh, yeah, Evan Peters. He is like another internet boyfriend. Yeah. Who is... There was somebody else. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure we're forgetting lots, but... Yeah. No, but why are all these... Like, why do you think Pedro Pascal is non-threatening? Hmm. It's indescribable, but it's something about his aura. It just feels gentle. Mm-hmm. Yep. It just feels caring. Yep. Compassionate. Yes. Um. Oh, Mark Ruffalo. People. <gasps> I love people. 
people talk about. Yeah. I don't know as much about him, really. I don't have anything positive or negative to say. Um, I just know he's Italian, so I love him. And I always, he just, that's another one. He's been with his wife for like decades and he's yeah. soft spoken and, you know, he's got the curly hair and the full lips. He's another one. Like, he's, I wouldn't say he has like feminine features, uh, but he no. is very soft spoken and he's, yeah, he's another one. Like, people, I have people a controversial submission I would like to put forward for the jury to consider. Okay. Okay. Ben Affleck. <laughs> and I'll mm. tell you why. Okay. All right. I'm listening. All ears. Uh, Ben Affleck. Um, I think you know around around the Gone Girl era, mm-hmm. uh, we all decided he was perfect for that role in Gone Girl because we hated him. We hated him. Yeah. We we just there was something about him that was hateable. Mm-hmm. But seeing him so demoralized <laughs> recently, I know. every time I see him, he's staring off into space he's sighing deeply <laughs> he's spilling his coffee yeah, no, he's carrying I, his duncan he, yeah he just he's become the internet boyfriend i think because I think he's more become the internet husband yeah yeah right yeah. the internet husband kind of the guy behind the scenes mm-hmm. the guy who sort of gently tries to guide his egomaniacal wife right and you do you kind of have to say because you see her and I'm sorry, she seems insufferable. Delulu, <laughs> Delulu, and then you look at him and you're like, "What, dude? P- why are you such a pussy? Like, why do you find that attractive?" Mm. And that it really does feel like, oh, this is a guy who just likes to be with bitchy women. I mean, it is weird they got back together, but uh, yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't is know. There, it happens, I guess. What about uh, like Tom? Ha- oh, you know who's another one? Andrew Garfield. Who oh, I yeah. love, love, yeah. love, 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 Andrew Garfield. And I'm yeah. just going to say, and I'm going to throw this out there. We don't have to discuss which ones, but many of these actors are rumored to be either gay or bisexual. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, interesting. Uh, which is, which is, is interesting, but I do, I do like Andrew Garfield quite a bit. He just seems like a sensitive guy. Well, I've got two more for you. Oh, hit me. Okay. Michael Sarah. Okay. And Jason Schwartzman. Okay, Michael Sarah, I can see because he he really just he just seems so awkward. Yeah. Jason Schwartzman, I don't know about. He is that just to, me? Yeah, that's just you. Oh, that okay. is just you. Hmm. He seems kind of douchey to me. Uh, and I don't think, okay. Right. And I don't think a lot of people know him, and I don't think a lot of people know he's Francis Ford. Francis Ford Coppola's. Oh, I thought. Uh, yeah, I thought everybody knew that, but he uh, has kind of like uh, flown out of the radar. He's with just that. kind of been taking it easy, I guess. Yeah. 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 And good uh, for him. Give somebody yeah. else a chance. He really, yeah. Give somebody else a chance. Give I another Nepo, Nepo baby babies. a chance. Okay. Yeah. These Nepo babies. Uh, I don't know. I would like to hear from other people in the comments. Yeah. Who's your Who, internet boyfriend? Who's your internet boyfriend? <laughs> who's And who's non-threatening? Uh, I'm starting to... I'm, I used to have this huge crush on Jeremy Renner mm. until he turned out to be kind of a dick because he would say... So he said certain things on award shows and we're like, oh, bro, this is gross. Uh, and then he oh. nearly died when he got run over by a snowplow. Oh, okay. Like he, he literally, he, he did die for a few minutes huh. or a few, for like a few seconds. And then he was in the hospital and he broke like 38 bones or something. And so he, it's, it's, hmm. he's just on this new, he's like a new person, you know, Hey, oh. I almost died. And I think maybe I don't want to be a dick. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of back on the Jeremy Renner train, but he's not, there's no, he's threatening looking like he looks threatening it does yeah right you know because of the roles he's played but and what i've always loved about him and why i've loved him as an actor is there's always this raw vulnerability to him this rawness and he can bring this to like any character he plays hmm. so loved loved him uh yeah finn wittrock i feel the same way about no one knows who finn wittrock is but you should because he's just such a phenomenal actor oh uh, what's he in he was in, uh, he's in a lot of American Horror Story. He was in The Luckiest Girl Alive. He played the fiance, Luke. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So um, moving off of the art. Oh, internet... I, can I mention one more? Internet Absolutely, boyfriend? Sarah. Internet boyfriend recently, recently for me, Fallen from Grace. Um, uh, Taika Waititi. I think is how you Yeah, he's name. kind of a douche. Guy from huh? New Zealand. But um like, I 
I recently found out that he like abandoned his family mm-hmm. for Rita Ora <laughs> to be with Rita Ora. Rita yeah. Ora, yeah. yeah. So that's disappointing. So boo, boo yeah. to you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right. So are we moving on? Yeah. So I sent you something the the other day. And it's regarding one of our evergreen topics, yeah. Right of of the, uh, the the trend on TikTok that I absolutely loathe. Of if your name is Tiffany and your husband's name is Luke, and yeah. he was flying to Tallahassee for a business meeting, he's not on a business meeting. I'm sitting in front of them on the plane and put that whole that bullshit. Yeah. Now we have been saying for years basically right? since tiktok started <laughs> for years yeah how like this whole i would want her to know uh, blah 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 listen she want, would want to know she right? would want to know if it yeah. were me da 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 that mm-hmm. whole thing now this mm-hmm. is not we're not talking about oh i found this out privately and i was to tell her privately this is mm-hmm. i know i'm gonna go to the internet and i'm gonna put this whole situation on blast and say it's because I'm a girl's girl. Right. And then I'm looking out for the wife. That is bullshit. We all know it's bullshit. And this creator, pretty critical, calls it out. Yeah. I'm a plain flirting. I just found out so much information about it and I want to really dig into it. I'm just playing. You guys are disgusting. Like, <laughs> actually repellent. You guys are loving this. Like, you cannot get enough. And your addiction to surveillance and detention is betraying the fact <laughs> that although you're the exact demographic to call yourself girls, girls, your only allegiance is to your own entertainment. You guys are having fun. You're posting theories. You're sleuthing around looking for her name. You're posting her name. You're posting her photo. You know she knows by now. She's gotten her fill of hearing from strangers on the internet, but you haven't gotten your fill. And to take that video in the first place and post it on the internet and be like, find her is already a betrayal. Because while some women would welcome that and be like, I wanna know no matter what, I don't care who else knows, other women are very private. And if their husband was cheating on them, they may wanna deal with that privately. Now, all their friends know, all their family knows, but it's not just people that are close to them that they trust who know. Everyone that doesn't like them knows. Everyone that they know professionally knows. If she wants to leave her husband, now everybody knows why. If she wants to stay with her husband and work it out, now everybody knows and has an opinion on whether or not she should have. Not to mention some people have open marriages. Some people have rules about traveling, rules about flirting. Like, let me not get too into that because I know you guys get butt hurt every time, but like not every marriage is like your own. I think that's pretty unlikely in this case, just looking at the stats, but like it could be, and you could be putting them on blast. And it's so clearly people working out their own demons around having been cheated on. Just like, look at the comments, like my husband did X, Y, Z and blah, 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 blah. Okay, girl, what does that have to do with this? What does your life have to do with her life? Like, why are you now posting photos of her? There are 1.2 million likes on that video. She is no longer able to extricate herself from it. And the original woman who posted it is like, like getting excited every time another like rolls in. Because if you really and truly thought what you were doing was helpful, you would have deleted the video by now. You would have been like, okay, we found her. We told her no need to keep this up on the internet. But it was never, ever, ever about her. It was always, always, always about you and how you saw other people surveil other people, tell their business on the internet and get rewarded for it. Even if she comes around and says, thank you so much. I'm so glad I know. I'm so glad you posted this video. You're still disgusting because you had no idea of knowing where the chips are going to fall. I'm going to teach you guys something so cool and interesting. It's called SMS. It's a text message in colloquial terms. So what you do is when you see something crazy happening and you know that inserting yourself in it may serve to hurt someone else, you just text. You just text it to your friend. You're welcome. There's another video of the guy on the plane flirting. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Full stop. We've been saying this for years, and I can remember when I first said it, people are like, you're not a girl's girl. No, you're absolutely right. Because the whole girl's girl title 
it implies that you you should you support women across the board blindly. No, I do not. Right. Right. I, I don't blindly universally. Is it unilaterally? No. Could be. Yeah. Like I, th- that's not me. If we, it, I, I just right. don't because women aren't. Women do some shitty things, and I, I will call it out. Then that does not have anything to do with being a girl's girl because I hate to tell you this. Most of this whole girls, girls thing is really just being a decent human being. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, I just thought her point was so well said when she said your only allegiance is to your own entertainment. Right. Right. That's that's it. No notes. (laughs) We have said time and time again. So you think that it's beneficial to this other woman to put this on blast and let everybody know potentially before her. Mm hmm. And if she decides to stay with him, now they're all going to judge, or at least some of them are going to judge her, right? Yeah. Uh, You're also potentially putting this woman in a very dangerous situation. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we never really, no one ever talks about that. No one ever talks about that. Because if she speaks up, right, or if it escalates, or if he loses his job, whatever, guess who he's going to take it out on? Right. Because it ain't going to be sally starface xyz on tiktok it's right. going to be his wife right yep. so let's all stop pretending like we care this is i, I saw another one just like it a few a few weeks ago i'm no longer my, my ex-friend was involved with a, a married man and if your name is this and your husband's name is this and it's a very unique name okay then your man is cheating on you and when she first told me, you know, I disagreed with it and something, something, something six months later. So for six months, you were you fine were with okay, it. You, you were okay <laughs> with this. But now you're claiming this is the reason the friendship ended? Right. No. Is that what I'm, is that what I'm hearing? Right. No, that's not nah. it. Nah, that's not it. Happened. She just yeah. did something to piss you off. Right. And now because you want revenge, you're going to throw another woman under the bus. Yeah. Period. That's correct. So enough with no this. notes. No notes. Stop <laughs> saying it's about other women and being a, you're full of shit. It's about you. Mm-hmm. And and your entertainment. And your entertainment. And we see we see you bitches. Now so I, knock it off. I do want to add here. Um, mm-hmm. it's perfectly natural and human to find this entertaining. Right. This is the same rush that we get from anything on Bravo. Right. Right. We just it's love the, it's to dopamine. watch it's other just people. dopamine. That's yeah, all it we is. love to watch people being messy, right? Right, and it's right. the reason people get so into like Real Housewives and stuff like that. Like you, to the extent that you can participate, mm-hmm. you want to because it's right. fun. So there's no shame in that, right? But you don't have to put everything on the internet. Right. <laughs> you don't. You could just do this with your friends, right? <laughs> like do a group text. Hey girls. Exactly. Hey girls. Go on a Discord. Do a group right. text. Do your sleuthing there and keep it to your fucking self. And then maybe find the wife and then contact her. I mean, you if you have... yeah, if you really want to. Right. If you really want to. But but I yeah, I, I imagine most of the thrill is you put this on the internet and you just you watch someone else find her, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then gets... you you get both the thrill of being involved in the mess but also the the moral purity of being able to say i'm just a bystander right and not to mention the god knows how many women who hear this story and think is that my husband is that my husband is that my you know, boyfriend? i never thought about that right usually they're specific enough that i i feel like well it's, i don't know it's only going to be a handful of people at, at max but mm-hmm. You know, but you think that you think that it's like there's only a few women's fiancés who are in Nashville for that weekend. I bet there's hundreds. Oh well, Nashville, yeah, <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> Nashville, Tampa, Miami, capital of the world, New York. Right? You know what I mean? Chicago. <laughs> I bet there's hundreds. Think of how many people's lives you might be screwing with when you do something like this. Also, so think of their children. Hundreds with like the like same same name on both sides. You think? I'm thinking a dozen max, but I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not like, let's say you're the same name is like what Matt. Well, Julia be. and Matt. Hey, if your name is Julia and your boyfriend's name is Matt, 
right. and he's in Chicago, I right. can guarantee you that if, uh, let's say, okay, let's say dozens, a couple dozen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not, it, people do not consider these, these possibilities and the no. fallout and knock no. it off. I Stupid. never did. I never did. Exactly. I said to Sarah, you know, I want something that's kind of like Bravo Real Housewives ish, you know, kind of like gossipy. And we're going, we were going through uh, posts on Reddit and we came across this one. Won't tell his ro- female roommate about us. Yeah. So I, was like, right I think we're on the right track. <laughs> All right. I've been dating a guy for a little over two months and things were going great. We are both in our late 40s. He has been divorced for about nine years while I have never been married and neither of us have kids. He lives with a female that is in her early 40s that he says is platonic, but she has always wanted more. But she has always wanted more. She doesn't Mm -hmm. know about me and I have issues with it. I feel like he is hiding me from her. He says he doesn't he just doesn't want to cause problems because she is very emotional. I have met his family, friends, and we go on trips together, but I can't go to his house that he owns because of this woman. What? The house is being sold in a few months, so she has to move out then, and she isn't going to the new place. Do I just wait it out, tell him to take a hike? Uh, the, the latter, ma'am. The latter. <laughs> so he's living with a woman. Mm-hmm. He's living with a woman, right? <laughs> that mm-hmm. has feelings for him. Mm-hmm. and he knows and he knows about it mm-hmm. and so he th- it's right there awkward situation but he's like nope i love i love awkward i love I'm, attention i love attention <laughs> and then he starts dating somebody else and he does not want to bring the new girlfriend into the situation because then he's going to lose that attention yeah. right remember swinging branch theory they are not going to let go of the old branch until they have a firm grasp on the new one Mm, yeah right i i don't like it we didn't ask for it i don't want it what this, to be correct <laughs> no this whole this just the, uh, dating a guy this just feels very similar to what we were talking about earlier with don oh. mm-hmm. he's keeping you to th- this is how you know when you're dating somebody and they have a female friend or like a woman bestie which mm-hmm. we've already said i can't fuck it i don't trust i don't give a shit if they keep them separate you know, they might talk about them, but you don't really interact with them much and you don't, that is a problem. Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily means, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're cheating. It's that they're compartmentalizing. Right. Right. They're compartmentalizing for a reason. Yeah. There's only one reason to do that. <laughs> right. And it's because, right. Exactly. There really is only one. And that's usually guilt. Right. Or it's, it's, it's something nefarious exactly it just, it's because there's something to it right the only there's something to, to it. do it is because either he your girlfriend watch... will tell you right there should be a boundary here and you don't mm-hmm. want there to be right right or yeah you're yeah you're not well i mean that's really it <laughs> right so uh kick this douche to the curb um and also i will just say he's in his late 40s with a roommate am i being judgy here yeah a little I know. Mm-hmm. I know. I mean, that's. I it's mean, a... Kristen, he loves attention and probably she does most of the cleaning. True. Especially if she's in love with him. Right. That's the other reason why he doesn't want, he doesn't want to lose the situation. Doesn't necessarily yeah. mean he has feelings for her, but it does mean he's taking advantage of her in one way or another because uh, he correct. sucks. All right. Remember, I, which is it? Is it the what's tomorrow? Tomorrow's the last. So that's the second and the fourth episodes per month are free. First and third are for Patreon subscribers only. And remember, we've got the Sex in the City uh, bonus episode coming up. And I have a little I have a little uh, connection to one of the episodes that we're going to be talking about. Well, that's exciting. That's it is exciting. Uh, so do a little the, New York trivia. No, no, oh. it's, it's a little bit sexier than that. Oh, OK. So <clears throat> the bonus episodes will go out, what did we say? Tuesday or Wednesday-ish. Mm-hmm. The free episodes, the early release episodes go out on Friday and the free episodes go out on Monday. Now, if you are a Patreon subscriber, you get the, those episodes a couple of days early. Uh, so we're we're just changing, that, changing things up because of the summer. Yep. So go to patreon.com slash datologycoach, get the 
two episodes per month, plus a bonus episode, plus the Sex and the City series, plus the posts and the essays. It's a very good deal for a lot of content. Uh, So just go subscribe. And send us your questions to... Uh, you can send them to hello at datologycoach.com or please, I'd prefer you go to datologycoach.com and click ask a question. Follow us on Instagram at datologypod and follow me at Inst- on Instagram at the Kristen M. T-H-E-C-H-R-I-S-T-A-N-M. Follow me on TikTok at datologycoach and my character analysis and follow me on YouTube at Dat- datologycoach and my character analysis. Got anyth- anything else there? When men go low, I'll see them in hell. That's right. (laughs) Value your time, people. Bye. Bye.